Hi again, welcome to Pearl Magazine. Over the years, a lot of ink has been used on generational stereotypes, from baby boomers to Generation X, and of course, the millennials. It's a group that is often painted as lazy, entitled and unable or unwilling to hang on to a job. But in an effort to understand this increasingly influential generation, one thing is becoming clear. Millennials are making their own rules for work and life. Many are disrupting traditional business ideas with a fearless entrepreneurial energy. Tonight we meet some brave young minds who've left behind their comfort zones to take on the world on their terms. Welcome to an annual dose of business inspiration. Every February, students in the UK gather to find out the best ways to be business owners. 16-year-old Henry is paying a visit even though he is already an entrepreneur. He started writing fairy tales at the age of 10. Later, he established a company selling merchandise from his stories. I get so inspired by these sorts of events. Um, there are some amazing, amazing speakers who have just done some brilliant things um, and who teach so many people some great lessons. In recent years, more and more people started their own businesses at a very young age, just like Henry. According to a study conducted by Santander University in 2018, over a fourth of the students in the UK had businesses in college. The total turnover of these firms was up to £1 billion a year, an increase of 32 percent over 2016. It's also the reason that millennials are called the entrepreneurial generation. More young people are becoming entrepreneurs, which is an absolutely amazing thing. But I don't think that a lot of young people my age really know what it means. Um, and I really encourage other people to start to uh, learn what, what it is to be an entrepreneur. I feel like there's so many people out there that want to solve problems, but the best way to do that in my view, in our view, is through entrepreneurship. Because young people want to be engaged in what they do. In, the, in this 21st century, people want to know why they're doing stuff, not just what we're doing. The millennials are also called Generation Z, or the app generation. They grew up in the digital age with significant technical advantages. They're masters of using high-tech gadgets. And no matter where they are, the internet can always provide them with endless solutions. Unlike the generation before us, who slowly learned how to use it, my generation uniquely understands how to make a difference with it. 15-year-old Hillary was born in Hong Kong. She went to an international school. Chinese is not her strong point. However, her Mandarin ability improved five years ago after attending a summer course in Taiwan. It also inspired her to start her own business. At that time, 10-year-old Hillary developed a language learning app for kids. Over 65,000 people from nearly 60 countries have downloaded it. A business is a problem-solving process. Many people think that Mandarin is hard to learn. Just like me, I feel proud to have solved this problem. Hillary is a book lover. Her room is filled with them. The idea of becoming an entrepreneur never occurred to her because her dream was always to become a writer. Five years ago, she participated in a kid's startup competition with the idea of a language app. Some investors were interested in it. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Hillary. After my speech, I met many people, including my first mentor. She told me that she liked my idea, and it could become a real business. Thank you. That's it. It was a surprise. I thought it was just child's idea, but they treated me as an adult, and we had serious conversations. In the end, Hillary's mom invested around $100,000 into her project and hired a Canadian IT team to do the programming. Hillary had no work experience before. Her first job was as the CEO of her own company. It took them more than two years to launch the app. 
The feedback was not so good at the beginning. For several months, we only had four customers, including my brother and myself. The feeling was not unhappiness but frustration. How come it didn't work out after so much effort? After some media exposure, more people got to know Hillary and her startup. But criticism came as well. She is nothing but a puppet. It must be her parents who have helped her with a project. She's just using her parents' money. Honestly, we did invest, but the money was well spent. It gave her a chance that could never have been bought by money. After three years running the company, Hillary hasn't hired any employees. She works at home, so there was very little expenditure. Earlier this year, she took down the app, fixed some bugs, and launched the second version. I couldn't have done all these things without the support of my parents. I am the lucky one. But it also requires you to take action and fight for the chance. Not everyone has the same opportunities. Basketball player Jordan knows that very well. The most impressive uniform for me is this one. When the whole world believed that we were going to win, we lost the game. We'd even planned how to celebrate and take photos after the victory. Maybe regret is a part of being young. The 18-year-old has another thing he has been regretting. Two years ago, he won a startup competition. Investors approached him for collaboration. But his parents didn't support the idea. They thought he was too young to do it. He had to let it go. I thought it would be really cool to have my business as a Form 4 student. But when I came back home, my family said, why can't you concentrate on schoolwork? In their opinion, I was just a kid. Investors appreciating my idea didn't mean that I had the ability to do it. His dream of becoming an entrepreneur at the age of 16 didn't come true. But he got another idea two years later. Back in secondary school, Jordan used to be the captain of his basketball team. The training was at least four days a week. But in Hong Kong, playing basketball is not easy. The first problem is to book a court. Basically, you need to book two weeks in advance. The procedures are very complicated. Some people would rather directly go to the court to ask about the vacancy. But usually the answer is no. So they have to find available places on the street. He also says it's really hard to find other players when he wants to play. Therefore, he decided to develop an online platform to help match the available courts with players. The idea has been successfully executed overseas, but nobody in Hong Kong has done it. He would like to give it a try. Sometimes I ask other players whether I can join them because they're using the space, but most of the time they would turn me down. I feel disappointed and I have to find another place. Jordan was not a top student at school, and he doesn't like reading. But to be a better business owner, he knows the first step is to learn more about business and technologies. So he has been trying to read more books on the subject. Today is a reader, tomorrow is a leader. Sometimes people say only smart people read, but I think it's reading that makes people smart. The second step of Jordan's plan is to turn his idea into an application. He has no network or money. He can only count on himself. But luckily, he has a cousin to help him with the coding. After they started coding, they realized the project was much more complicated than they thought. Many regulations and legal issues will be involved. In Hong Kong, most of the bookings need to go through the Leisure and Cultural Services Department system. To develop a system to deal with the bookings, we need to talk to the government. So now the plan is to approach other companies to cooperate on the project. Jordan admits that he doesn't have enough life experience, and he understands disappointment is inevitable on his road to becoming an entrepreneur. But he still wants to give it a try. 
I grew up in a grassroots family. I have no resources or financial support. But the good thing is, I'm young and I still have plenty of time. If I were limited by my age, I could lose many possibilities. These were the products that were then based off of the book. And then in 2018, I wrote my book, Young and Mighty, uh, which teaches young people how to start a business. This year, I launched a collection of bags for, uh, for Generation Z. This room is very special. I can see how I've grown up, um, not just through the products, but literally, because I've got my height on the door over here. So I can see this was actually when I kind of started the business. Uh, and then as I've grown up and launched all of the products, I've then got me now. 16-year-old Henry is from the UK. His family supported him financially to publish his first fairy tale book when he was 10. After that, he established his own company selling related kids' products. He has also explored different fields in the past six years. Some say he's a smart boy, but others disagree and believe it's not a good thing to be a businessman at such a very young age. In their opinions, you then start to worry about money when you're 18, which shouldn't be the case. You just know how to use it properly and you know how to manage it and control it and not worry about it when you're older. According to a U.S. market research company, 54% of Generation Z wants to be an entrepreneur. Some local schools have even added relevant courses to their school curriculum. Henry is one of those who sees the opportunity. He publishes books. He teaches other kids how to start their businesses and manage their wealth. He was also invited to give talks around the world. Now I really enjoy teaching younger people how to start businesses because I taught myself through Google and I think if I had had someone to say okay do this but don't do that that would have really helped so I think I just want to make sure that people who are like me like a younger version of me um, know how to start a business and know the right ways to go about it. Being busy running his company, Henry found it hard to find a balance between his startup and the schoolwork. He was therefore scolded by his teachers and the experience embarrassed him. Every day I was there being told that I was rubbish and that I wasn't going to succeed just because I was different and I wasn't fitting the normal life of a child. That is what led to me getting my, getting my stammer was because I was, being I was being bullied by the teachers, which was just a horrible, horrible feeling. I totally lost my confidence at school. He chose to drop out of school in the end and started homeschooling. Apart from focusing on his career, he can also fulfill another dream. There are moments that the words don't reach. There is a suffering too terrible to name. Next year, Henry will attend art school and hopefully become a musical actor after graduation. An entirely new and different road for him. In England, the school system is very a very straight road and sometimes a child needs to go off the road and, you know, go round a few corners and then back on the road. Um, I think Generation said the characteristics are express expression, the ability to to be whatever they want to be. If they want to, you know, reach the stars, then they can reach the stars. And if they want to sing, they can sing. When I was younger, you know, you would have to work in a bank. Or, you know, there were set jobs. And now, I think it's so different. You know, now they can literally, the world is at their feet. University enrollment has increased in the past 20 years. University graduates are not the most favored ones anymore. Going to a college or a university is not the only choice for some youngsters because of the high student loans. But does that mean millennials could have more options? I think the Eastern world still has a lot of expectations for youngsters. They want you to be a lawyer or doctor. It puts pressure on us. Hong Kong native Oscar is studying at the London School of Economics and Political Science. While his peers are all hoping to work in big law firms or investment banks, he is the only one who wants to fly in the sky, literally. 
Flying gives me a sense of success. It is so good. You can control the height and monitor the speed. Oscar's parents believe that he will be able to find a stable job after graduating from a top university in the UK. However, Oscar has always dreamed of being a pilot. He wanted to study aviation in Australia, but in the end, he had to listen to his parents and come to Britain. But that doesn't mean he's given up. Now he spends two to three days per week in private pilot training classes. The plan is to get a license after returning to Hong Kong. Flying is what I love the most. Nothing can make me feel happier than that. Sometimes it is tough to balance the schoolwork and pilot courses, but I'm also very satisfied. This historic pandemic has changed many people's plans. The UK economy is expected to suffer a big slump. Various industries feel the pain, especially the aviation sector. 18 to 24 year olds are now facing a record high unemployment rate. Oscar was born in 2000. He turned 20 this year. Like many young people, he knows there is a difficult road waiting for him. I'm a little bit worried, but there are still two years before I graduate. I'd better make good use of the time to enrich myself, so when I enter the job market, I could be a more competitive candidate. To be an entrepreneur doesn't mean one needs to start a new company. It could also be using the idea to add value to yourself or make it more than you expected. Natalie Chan is a founder of an entrepreneurship training agency. She encourages students to get out of the classroom and learn from their experiences. 15-year-old Hillary is her first full-time student. In the years since Hillary left mainstream school and studied at home, Natalie spent four months showing her around different companies, teaching her how to do research, write reports, and also other hands-on knowledge for a potential entrepreneur. I've seen so many people and had lots of different meetings during that time. I've developed many strategies, learned what is the right attitude and how to grow my business. In a startup competition in Hong Kong, usually you pitch an idea and that's it. Many won't bother to execute the project. So I think it is more of a mindset, an attitude, or what we call 21st century skills. Jordan, the young man working on his basketball app, also wants millennials to know more about entrepreneurship. Together with some friends with the same goal, they started a group to provide training for those primary school students. A startup does sound scary to some because they may consider it as a big project. But if you got to learn it as a secondary student, you would know it'll help you in the long run. I think millennials always want to be better people. They aren't afraid of speaking up. If they had a chance to make it perfect, why not go further? This is a digital age and we are like the programmers. We need to help the world debug and provide different solutions. I think people massively underestimate my generation, but the world isn't actually letting us be truly who we want to be yet, because until education changes, nothing's going to change. Age is nothing but a number. The happiest thing is to do what I want to do. The pandemic has changed our way of living. We have a special role to shape the world after COVID. Before the days of the Cross Harbor Tunnel and the MTR lines, traveling between Hong Kong and Kowloon was a big deal. 
ferry services became a crucial part of the commute, not just for cars, but also for passengers going to work and school. In the 70s, three ferry lines from Jordan, Kuntong, and Kowloon City would transport cars and trucks to and from Central, North Point, and Saiwan Ho. There was no traffic congestion, and it took no more than 20 minutes when the water was calm. It was a relaxing ride. As the Cross Harbor Tunnel commenced service, the auto ferries remained popular as many tried to avoid traffic through the lone tunnel between Hong Kong Island and the Kowloon Peninsula. Some say it actually took longer to venture through the tunnel than taking the ferry. But when the Eastern Harbor Crossing opened and the MTR connected its island line with the Kuntong line, the demise of the surface marine routes became inevitable. In 1998, the last remaining line between Kowloon City and North Point eventually shut down for good. But since trucks carrying dangerous goods like explosives and gasoline are still prohibited from using any overwater bridge or the tunnels, they remain as the only ferry patrons these days. And for those wanting to experience driving in the harbor, they can still charter a special voyage. That's our show for this week. Next week, in a world stumbling into environmental oblivion, millennials may be our best hope. Thanks for watching. See you next time.